In this video, we're going to look at uh, graphing a line using the slope-intercept form of a line. So first, let's look at what slope-intercept form of a line is. And the formula for slope-intercept form is right here, y equals mx plus b. Now you probably notice first thing that I've got the m and the, x and the b variable in different colors. And that is because they represent some important information about the line. The m, the m represents the slope of the line. Whatever number is the coefficient on the x term is going to be your slope. And the b represents the intercept. And more specifically, it's the y-intercept. It's called slope-intercept form of a line, but it is talking about the y-intercept. I'll put a little y there to remind us. So that means where the line is going to cross the y-axis. The y-axis being your vertical axis, and then the x-axis is your horizontal axis. Let's look at an example. Let's say we want to graph y equals 1 half x plus 2. No, let's do 3. y equals 1 half x plus 3. So your first step is always to graph or plot the y-intercept. Plot the y-intercept. So in this case, our y-intercept is 3 and it's positive 3. There's a plus here in the formula. If this would have been a minus 3, then it would have been a negative 3. So I'm going to come over here, and I'm going to go to my y-axis, and on 3, I'm going to put a dot. So I plot my y-intercept right there. Step number 2 is to execute your slope from the y-intercept. Let's remember what slope means. Slope means rise over run. The slope of our line, the m value, is whatever is being multiplied by x. So in our case, it's 1 half. That's our slope. So that is our rise over run. So we're going to rise 1, run 2. And we do that from the y-intercept. So we start right here at the y-intercept and we're going to rise 1, run 2. Now both the 1 and the 2 are positive. So when I rise 1, I go up. And, I go, and I'm going to run a positive 2, which would be to my right. So I rise 1, run 2, make a dot. And then I can keep going. Rise 1, run 2, make a dot. Sort of like stair steps. Rise 1, run 2, make a dot. And then I have this all these points in a line, and I connect these points, and that is the graph of the line. So those are your steps. It's really important to know how to find your slope, how to find your y-intercept, and to know what to do with them. So remember, your slope is whatever is number is being multiplied by x, and your y-intercept is your constant that's being added or subtracted from your x term. And it's important you do stuff in the correct order. Always plot your y-intercept first, and then execute your slope. All right, let's look at another example. Maybe look at an example with some negatives in it. I'll take this out of here. Okay, let's see. How about y equals negative, let's do a negative slope. y equals negative 3x plus 1. So let's pull a graph in here. What is the... Let's see, step number one. What is step number one? Plot your y-intercept. Okay, so you got to ask yourself, what's my y-intercept? Well, that's the number usually at the end when it's written in slope-intercept form. And so in this case, it's a positive 1. So I have to plot my y-intercept at positive 1. So I'm going to go up here to 1 on my y-axis. Remember, that's your y-axis. And I'm going to make a point right there, 1. Next thing I do is execute the slope from the y-intercept. And slope means rise over run. My slope is right here, negative 3. Now that's not in the form of a fraction. How could I write negative 3 as a fraction? Negative 3 over 1. That's the same as negative 3. It's not negative 3 over negative 1, because if it was negative 3 over negative 1, that'd be a positive 3. It's just negative 3 over positive 1. 
So that means I'm going to rise negative 3, run 1. Rising negative 3 means to go down. So come back here. Remember, you're going to start from your y-intercept. You're going to rise negative 3. So you're going to go down 3, boom, 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 and then over a positive 1. So I'm still going to go to the right 1 because it's a positive 1. Down 3, right 1. Now, you could also write negative 3 as 3 over negative 1. That's the same as negative 3. Well, what if we thought of the slope that way? If we thought of the slope as 3 over negative 1, we would rise positive 3 and run negative 1. Let's try that. Start here. We rise positive 3. 1, 2, 3. Run negative 1. So I'm going to go to the left. Make a dot. Rise positive 3. Run negative 1. I'm off my graph here, but we can visualize what's happening. So it doesn't matter. Notice all the points are still in a line. Whether I go down 3, right 1, or up 3, left 1, it really doesn't matter. And that's because these two numbers are equivalent. So you can kind of choose when you have a negative slope which number you want to apply the negative to. You can either apply the negative to the numerator or you can apply the negative to the denominator. But you wouldn't want to do both because if you did both, that would be a positive 3. And our slope is not a positive 3. It's a negative 3. So when your slope's a negative, just apply it to one or the other. OK, let's do another example. Oh, well, let's see. I didn't get everything here. Let's do one with um, a negative fraction slope. I erased our steps, but hopefully you wrote them down. If not, just go back in the video and, and write down those steps. So this one, I'm going to give us a line to graph, and then I think it'd be a good idea if you pause the video and give it a try on your own. See if you can come up with the correct answer. That's a good way to practice. Okay, so let's try y equals negative 3 halves x minus one. All right, so give it a try now. Okay, hopefully you did your first step, you, which is to plot your y-intercept, which is negative one. So I'm going to put a dot here. Now my slope is negative three halves. So remember what we talked about on the last example. You want to apply that to either the numerator, you could think of it like that, or the denominator, you could think of it like that. So you're either going to go rise negative 3, which is basically down 3, right 1. This would be down 3. I'm sorry, 2. Down 3, right 2. Or you could go up 3, left 2. Rise over run. Doesn't matter. Let's, let's do it both ways. So if I do down 3, right 2, from my y-intercept, down 3, right 2, be right there. If I did up 3, left 2 from my y-intercept, up 3, left 2, it would be right there. So it wouldn't matter. It would be the same line. Oops, kind of missed. There we go. All right, hopefully this video helped. Um, in the next video, I'm going to show you what to do if the line is not quite in slope-intercept form yet.